Teresa Green from Slow Paths Wellness and it's Mindful Monday. Today I wanted to talk about mindfulness as it relates to the changings of the seasons. So in the Chinese medicine lunar calendar, this is the first day of autumn. Now for a lot of people in the west or in the, I guess the northern hemisphere where it's summer, this doesn't feel like autumn because a lot of times it's still very, very warm. But if you pay attention with your body, you'll notice in the next couple of weeks that even if the temperature hasn't changed, even if it's near 100 in Fahrenheit or whatever you know, the normal summer temperature is for you, there's a different quality to the heat. It doesn't feel quite as hot. I know when we lived in Austin when we were in school for Chinese medicine that it would be over 100 very regularly. But once it got into, you know, as late as mid-autumn, but around the early August, the early August, mid-August, the temperature changed. There was a shift. And that shift is also something that happens within our bodies because even though most of us do our best to ignore things like day-night ratios and weather and things like that, our nervous systems are actually tuned to be very sensitive to that. So we are tuned to, uh, I know a lot of people may notice in the summertime that you get up naturally earlier and you want to stay up naturally later because the sun is out. Our bodies are very closely connected to sunlight, so much so that when we teach heat sleep hygiene, when I'm teaching patients about sleep hygiene, I talk about making sure that you're exposed to light especially in the morning, sorry, that's breakfast warming up, especially in the warm morning when you want to be awake and that you're exposed to less light in the evening when you want to be asleep, even computer screen light. That's because our bodies are very closely attuned to our environments. So in autumn, each season in Chinese medicine is associated with uh, different processes that you can focus on, different emotions, different uh, kind of states of being. And, and, and also different uh, body processes are considered to be either at their height or at their weakest at different seasons. So in autumn, to in autumn um, the kind of activity of autumn from a broad perspective is to begin the process of letting go of things that haven't worked for you during the year, letting go of anything that's kind of been in your way, and also of beginning the process of sort of turning inward, deciding what's really important to you. Because if you think about it, that's a part of letting go. You let go of the things that don't serve you so that you can take in more of the things that do. And so there's sort of an um, um, analysis process there. It doesn't necessarily have to be completely um, conscious, but it kind of happens. You start just kind of saying, okay, well, I don't need this and I want more of this. And I like being mindful of it, which means bringing that to consciousness. To look at your year or look at your overview of life and kind of look at the directions that you want to go in. And those are generally set more in the spring or and, and sort of thought through in the winter time. And we'll talk about those as the season comes up. And say, okay, who do I want to be? And how is my life now aligning to who I want to be? And what can I either add or take away to do that? And in autumn, it's more about the taking away, more about the letting go of things, which only leaves what you still want. So as an example of that, one of the things that I definitely want in my life is to have a sense of peace. And so as I look at my life, I realize that part of what has kept me from that peace has been a sense that I want to be this very, very, very busy acupuncturist and I want to work really, really hard at things. And so over the course of the year, I've more and more tried to align my mind with the idea that I can be productive, I can be profitable, I can be helpful, I can be useful, I can be giving, I can do all kinds of really wonderful and helpful things, but I don't have to be super busy or working hard. So one of the things I've let go of this year, and I'm going to continue that process into the autumn, is to let go of the idea of busy as good. I'm looking into the idea of peaceful as good. So what that means is I'm simplifying things. Not simplifying letting go of things I like, but trying to let go of things that I don't like so much. So I'm trying to spend a little less time on the internet. I'm trying to look at the things that I have on my to-do, must-be-done kind of list and see if there's anything I can kind of throw out. You know, are there things that I do because it seems like things that people do and I don't necessarily need to do that. So, um, you know, looking at my work schedule, trying to acknowledge all the different roles I play and give them all space. 
which means letting go of some of the extra things that I may not necessarily need to do, whether that's, um, you know, dusting <laughs> or whether it's uh, maybe one little thing in work that I can't think of what that might be at the moment because I've already simplified a lot, but letting go of, um, you know, being there an hour early or something to prepare when I can prepare just as well in 30 minutes. So those are some of the things that I'm doing and the mindful state that can go with that because mindfulness, a lot of times action when you're taking mind, when you're uh, working towards a mindful life, actions arise from your mindful state instead of the opposite, which is what usually happens when you don't practice any form of mindfulness at all. You kind of, you act out of uh, the state of nervousness or out of the state of, I must do this in order to, you know, feel safe or not, um, not feel unworthy or get rid of my frustration. I must do something. But when you're in a mindful state, you start thinking, okay, so I'm trying to cultivate a state of peace. What creates peace? So letting go of the things that don't work, that's one way of doing it. Also, as I said, autumn's a time that we start thinking of the process of beginning to turn more inward, not in a selfish way, but in an aware and mindful way where you acknowledge things that are going on in yourself. You notice them. That's basically a lot of all mindfulness is. Noticing what's going on with yourself and then choosing the things that you want to be going on and trying to increase those by doing your activities consciously rather than sort of just darting from thing to thing. So uh, part of the idea of autumn is also not just choosing the kind of who you want to be and making your actions fit that. Um, it's also choosing the state you want to be in and practicing that state because then you can let go of the other. So I find I do not want to be nervous. I do not want to be anxious. I do not want to be full of regrets all the time. I do not want to be resentful. Those are the things I want to let go of. So when I notice them coming up, because that's actually a really good cue that you need a little mindfulness break, when I start feeling like I'm doing so much for everyone else and not taking care of myself, well, that's that can be called resentment, called resentment. And so one of the ways I take care of that is when I feel that, I start working towards um, self-care in small doses because sometimes trying to do the big doses just makes you more resentful because you get frustrated because it's hard to do. And one of the, my favorite ways to do self-care in the face of resentment is to enjoy something. And it needs to be something really small so I can do it very easily a lot of times. So simple things like looking at, you know, I have a painting up here I really like, it's a print but I really love it. Looking at that and enjoying it and thinking about the fact that I took the time to choose something that I enjoyed and use it and put it into my life. I took care of myself that way. Or my things like my little uh, throw here, I just love the colors in that. And that was something that was kind of different. I was used to just sort of picking up whatever I could from a sale bin and making it fit my life. And I saw that and I really liked it. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to get this because I like it. Not because I can make it fit, but because I can make the other things in my life fit around it a little bit. I enjoy going outside. I enjoy hearing birds. I enjoy feeling a breeze on me. And so I make time for that. I do a walk every morning. And then if I find myself feeling really down in the middle of the day and it's, you know, not 100 degrees with 100% humidity, which thankfully we don't have quite that hot here like we did in Texas, but it's, it's warm enough. Uh, but when it's a pleasant day, I go outside, I feel the breeze, I look outside, I look at the clouds. If it's a nasty day and I don't want to be outside, I look out my window and I look out the clouds so I get a touch of the outside. I bring plants into my life so that I have the outside inside. Um, I find something that I can have that's very healthy for me, but I also really enjoy it, like sweet potatoes or tomatoes this time of year or strawberries or blueberries. And I have a, a, a it doesn't have to be a giant portion. A lot of times a giant portion actually takes away from the enjoyment because you're not mindful anymore. You're just kind of shoveling it in. A small portion, and I just really enjoy it. And doing that, cultivating that idea of I'm going to enjoy things, I'm going to take time to give myself that enjoyment, it changes the way that my brain works. My, it's very hard for your brain to feel threatened when you're enjoying something, which means that it's very hard to remain anxious in the face of enjoyment. 
So that's one of the ways that I've tried to let go of anxiety and let go of nourishment by opening, or not nourishment, I'm not letting go of nourishment, letting go of nervousness by opening myself up to more enjoyment, especially when I feel resentful. So today for Mindful Monday, think about autumn. Think about autumn as a time to kind of look over the things going in, on in your life and choosing the ones that you would like less of. And also choosing, and therefore in a way, choosing the ones you want more of. So if you want to feel less hurry, then just look at the opposite. Well, that means I want to be able to move slower. And even before you try to attain that, because it's very hard to jump from a hurry, nervous, kind of not really be mindful mindset into a very mindful one, especially if it's a big change, try putting on that feeling. So even if right now you still feel like you jump from one thing to another and you're very rushed and don't feel well, take a minute, take two minutes, take five minutes. It doesn't even have to be you know, any more than that to start out with. And practice. How would it feel if I woke up in the morning and thought today's going to be a good day? How would it feel if I cultivated the idea that I have enough so I don't feel like I have to work constantly? excuse me, constantly just to get by? How would it feel if I thought I can be unhurried? I can give myself the dignity of being able to go through my life unhurried. What would that feel like? Even before you go through the complicated process, perhaps, of feeling, figuring out how to do that so that you can do it as a constant, more constant state, not grabbing a couple minutes here and there where you kind of imagine it. <clears throat> And I can tell you from personal experience over the past two years, as I took my mindfulness from trying to meditate my way out of anxiety, which worked well, but what worked even better was when I tried to meditate myself into states that I wanted to be in, and I was mindful, and I gave myself the gift of saying, I am not going to put up with a life that's filled with anxiety, filled with rush, filled with um, difficulty because that's what everyone says it has to be like. Once I got over cancer, I decided I'm not going to live like that anymore because every day I have now is a gift and I'm not going to waste that gift. So put yourself in the mindful state you want. And like I said, it can be imaginary. Eh, imaginary is kind of an odd term because when you put yourself in the state, you're in that state. Even if it's something that's hard to maintain because your lifestyle doesn't necessarily support it yet. So put yourself into that state. As you put yourself into that state, I, you, know, you can count on, I can tell you from my own experience, you start finding better ways to be in that state. You start noticing, oh, wow, every time I watch this TV show, I feel rattled. Or every time I talk to this person who doesn't acknowledge my needs, I feel I'm, I don't feel well, it doesn't feel good. I feel like I'm, you know, I, even though I thought I liked this relationship, I find I don't. I need to either address it or let go of it, depending on, you know, the different factors involved in relationships, which can also often, you know, that that takes a state of mindfulness too, to choose what you want. Or you find every time I see this person, even though I don't think of them as a big person in my life, I feel wonderful. Or every time I'm outside and there's a breeze or I love thunder, you know, wh whatever it is, you start noticing it as you start putting yourself in the states that you're looking for. If you want to feel confident, you start noticing, wow, when I have a to-do list that's three things long instead of 30 things long, at the end of the day, I feel more confident. Maybe I should, since I don't get 30 things done a day anyway, maybe I should whittle my to-do list down so that it's realistic instead of aspirational. So Mindful Monday. Look at things that you want less of. Look at their opposites for things you want more of, or just if you know already what you want more of, some people have a hard time with that, then look at the things you want more of and let go of the things that get in the way. Put on the states that you want to feel more of through mindfulness, and it can be very, very short durations. Even 15 seconds is helpful, but 15 seconds to five minutes. And as you do that, as you go through autumn doing that, notice notice the things that change in your body and you can make course corrections as you go so enjoy autumn enjoy the chance to let go of the things that either don't work or are getting in the way of where you want to go enjoy the nostalgia which is another part of, of autumn of looking back at good things in your life or remembering that even though there were bad things 
you're in a different state now if you are and if you aren't you can look back and remember the good things and remind yourself that if you had good things before you can have good things in the future and that can help you go through a hard time without having to stay in it <clears throat> grief is also a part of autumn and letting yourself feel that also allows you to go through the process of letting go of things so letting go letting go letting go in a very positive very happy way in a way that opens yourself up for more is one of the themes of autumn so let me wrap it up one more time because i didn't exactly wrap up there like i wanted to so first let go of the things that don't work for you whether that's because they're in, in just intrinsically bad for you in some way or because it gets in the way of where you're wanting actually wanting to go with your life Put yourself in the state that you want to be in. Put yourself in the state of joy. Put yourself in the state of peace. Put yourself in a state of confidence. Put yourself in a state of productivity by just imagining what it feels like for a few moments at a time. And be mindful. Sometimes what you think you want, you'll find isn't at all what you actually want when you actually put yourself into the state that you have to be in to do that. I used to think that I wanted to kind of be a health empire. I thought I wanted to have a magazine. I wanted to have a chain of stores and I wanted to have restaurants and I wanted to have you know, all these things. And when I put myself into the imagining of what that feels like, it felt manic. Now, in small doses, it felt kind of cool. The idea, oh, I can have all the things. But when I thought about it as a lifestyle, I thought, you know, when I think what I really, really like in my life, it's sitting down somewhere quiet with a book or a notebook and a cup of tea and you know maybe some kind of little food item that I can nibble on and looking outside and either having peace complete quiet or having some soft music playing that's peaceful and if I lived the life that I thought I wanted with all the different activities going around and around me I might have the money or the influence or the power to choose that time but I wouldn't have be able to choose it for very long because I couldn't do all those things and have time for that. I wanted more of that time. And so I started changing where I put into my life so that I could have productivity and joy and helping people, but with a lot more sitting still in the quiet, looking outside and sipping my tea. So I hope that you're able in this autumn to let go of the things that are getting in the way of what you want and who you want to be and that you have a lovely week and you can put on some of the joyful, happy, good things in life that you want so that you'll recognize them when you stumble upon them or when you mindfully move towards them during the week. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next Mindful Monday.